laboratory design in terms of infrastructure or engineering controls. The term engineering controls cover a broad spectrum of possible interventions that are intended to physically reduce worker exposure and protect workers from hazardous conditions. The learning objectives include the purpose of engineering controls, layout of laboratory areas, workflow in a laboratory and the infrastructure requirements for a laboratory. General considerations to be kept in mind while designing a laboratory. To provide a safe accessible environment for laboratory personnel to conduct their work, anticipate health and safety hazards and incorporate corrective measures into the design wherever possible, the safety of the patients or users the staff and the environment must be taken care of. There must be an ergonomic and linear workflow in the lab. Ergonomic means designed for efficiency and comfort in the working environment. Additionally, the laboratory and non-laboratory activities must be segregated as much as possible. The layout of a laboratory. It may be divided into three broad areas the sample collection area, the main laboratory working area and the general laboratory area. Each of these areas are further divided into constituent rooms and areas. The specimen collection area should consist of a waiting room where the patients may be seated while they wait for their turn for specimen collection like phlebotomy, separate toilets for male and female patients to be used while waiting for phlebotomy and also for the collection of patient collected samples like stool and urine. A specific specimen collection area for phlebotomy and an area to arrange and pack the specimens for transport to the different laboratories in case of a common specimen collection center. The main laboratory working area should include a specimen reception counter where the specimens will be received and registered, after which they will be distributed to the different sections of the laboratory for processing and testing. At some laboratories, before distribution, the samples may be centrifuged if required and then distributed. This depends on the institutional practice, structure and available facilities. The next areas are the specific sections where the different types of tests are performed. Then a specimen storage area for the storage of specimens until they are discarded depending on the laboratory policy. An area must be demarcated where the biomedical waste generated in the different sections are collected and temporarily stored until transported to the temporary storage area of the whole hospital. Then a clean area where the results are validated, verified and the reports are signed. And finally, a report collection counter. It may be located adjacent to the specimen reception counter but must be separated. The general laboratory area. There is no active processing and testing of specimens happening in the general laboratory area. However, they are necessary for the proper functioning of a wholesome laboratory. Clean, dry and safe areas must be provided for the storage of consumables, reagents and for the storage of testing records. There must be a general washing and cleaning area for the reusable items used for testing in the laboratory and an area for autoclave, hot air oven and other sterilizing equipment which generate a lot of heat. The laboratory must have a staff room provided with lockers and toilets where the staff may eat or change clothes as necessary. And finally, an office area to maintain staff records, purchase records and to send and receive communications. This image shows a sample layout of a basic laboratory with the entrance seen at the lower right hand side which leads into a reception, a waiting area and toilets for the patients. From there, they may go to the adjacent room to get their blood samples collected. 
Once the sample is collected, it is taken inside to the appropriate section for processing. Within the laboratory, there are different sections and areas for washing and disinfection. There is a separate storage area and staff room and staff toilets and there are stairs leading to the office area. This image tracks the possible movements of a patient. The patient enters from outside and has access to the reception, the waiting area, the blood sample collection area and the toilets. The patient should not have any access into the main laboratory area where the processing and testing of specimens are done. The main laboratory area should have restricted access allowing only employees and laboratory staff inside. The patient must also not have any access to the storage area and staff rooms. This image tracks the movement of the specimen. Once the specimen is collected and sent into the laboratory area for testing, then it should not leave the laboratory premises. Only once it is discarded can it be taken outside the laboratory. Please note that the specimen must also not be taken into the storage area, staff rooms or the office area. The general infrastructural requirements of a laboratory are listed from here onwards. First, the facility for hand wash. It must be available at the entrance and exit and in all the individual sections. It must be fitted with elbow operated taps, liquid soap, paper towels and disposal bins for the paper towels must be available at each hand wash sink. Next is water supply. There must be three kinds of water supplied in the laboratory. The first is clean water for general use. There must be a continuous supply of it for use in the laboratory, in the washing and cleaning areas and the toilets. Two, drinking water. The third, special water as per the specific requirements for equipment, such as RO water, deionized water, double deionized water and distilled water. Lighting. A laboratory must have a minimum lighting of 300 lux, where lux is a measure of intensity of illumination. The lights should not produce a glare on the workbench. There must be appropriate spacing between the light fixtures and the emergency exit pathways must also be lit adequately. Power supply. There must be multiple electrical points so that all equipment, including microscopes, may be connected directly to an electric point. Thus, avoiding the need for extension cords and multiple pins into one electric point. There must be a provision for emergency power supply in case of power outages and the emergency exit pathways and signs must be supplied by this emergency line. The laboratory must also have a UPS for the equipment. Ventilation. The laboratory must have air and humidity conditioning. There must be 6 to 10 exchanges per hour in a routine diagnostic laboratory and 10 to 12 air exchanges per hour in a TB laboratory. Exhaust fans must be fitted in relevant areas. Temperature. The temperature in a laboratory should be maintained between 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. The room temperature must be measured regularly and records of the readings must be maintained. Noise. Optimum noise in the working area of a laboratory should be less than 70 decibels. Gear plugs must be provided and soundproofing should be done in areas with very loud equipment. Adequate space must be provided for all equipment. They should be placed at least 6 inches away from the wall so that the controls behind the equipment may be accessed easily. They should be kept away from water hazards like hand washing sinks and out of traffic areas. The workbenches in a laboratory must be made of impervious material with a smooth surface. They should be of convenient height and width in accordance with the work done on that workbench. Biomedical Waste Management 
adequate colored bins as per the latest biomedical waste management rules must be provided at all points of waste generation in a laboratory there must be a robust communication system usually with phones for internal and external communication emergency exit signages and emergency evacuation plan must be displayed for all the laboratory personnel the gas supply to the laboratory must be piped and should have control valves this is preferred to gas cylinders as it reduces the risk of explosion the laboratory must have self closing doors of adequate width so that even large equipment may be brought in comfortably the corridors also must have adequate width and should be clutter free for easy evacuation of personnel in case of an emergency to summarize we looked at the aim of engineering controls which is to provide a safe accessible environment for laboratory personnel to conduct their work we looked at the layout of a laboratory which was divided into a specimen collection area a main laboratory area and general laboratory area each of which was further broken down the infrastructure requirements of the laboratory included water supply power supply ventilation temperature control noise control work benches communication systems signages doors and corridors thank you